Last week, a historic monument, including a statue, was destroyed by violent protesters. This monument was there so that people could learn something, so that they could remember something, so that anyone who saw it and took the time to notice could think about something that otherwise would have been forgotten. The statue was called Silent Sam, located at the University of North Carolina. It was a memorial to alumni of that school who died during the Civil War. But before I tell you about Silent Sam, I'll tell you about the Daughters of the Confederacy. After the Civil War, numerous groups started forming in the South. The organizers of these groups were mostly wives and daughters of soldiers. People who had to stay home during the war. People who lost family during the war. People who lost their family's primary provider during the war. These were people with a specific need, and that need was being ignored by government. So they had to come together as a community to fulfill it. These groups fundraised. They used the money they could pull in to help widows and orphans who could not help themselves. They used their money to bury soldiers whose graves would otherwise have gone unmarked, and care for cemeteries that would otherwise not have been cared for. Finally, they used whatever they could get to build monuments, so that we would remember the people who died fighting for their principles, and people who died defending their homes. An example of this burying the dead can be found in a battlefield city close to me, Gettysburg. There are stories from the aftermath of the battle, of locals from that city wearing sacks of lavender on their faces because the smell of the thousands of rotting dead was too much for them. When they finally did organize burial, only the Union soldiers were identified and given marked graves. Confederates were either thrown into pits or buried in groups and simply forgotten about. It wasn't until 1871 that someone did something, and that someone was the Daughters of the Confederacy groups. Local groups asked for bodies of people from their own hometowns who were missing at Gettysburg. Those bodies were searched for and found. Over the years, over 3,000 bodies have been brought back to their homes and given marked graves. There are, however, still today, thousands of Confederate dead unaccounted for on just that battlefield. In later years, when these groups started outgrowing the need for supporting widows and burying the dead, their focus turned more towards building monuments to ensure that America did not forget the war that split our nation against itself. Along with this, they started merging with each other to create a more nationwide group. This group called itself the United Daughters of the Confederacy, the UDC. It was this group that put up the Silent Sam statue. In 1900, this national group had 17,000 members, but it rapidly grew to over 100,000 by World War I. In 1907, the UDC requested that a statue be put up at the University of North Carolina to honor over the thousand veterans who were students of that school, including the 287 of those who died during the war. The request was approved. The following few years were spent fundraising, and in 1913, Canadian sculptor John Wilson was paid $7,500 for it. The reason it's called Silent Sam is the statue was part of a series of silent soldier statues. They were silent in that they either had no ammo boxes on their uniforms, or they had their weapons at parade rest position. And fun fact, the model for the statue was actually a northerner, a Union soldier from Boston. Although the statue depicted a Confederate soldier, it honored students and alumni who fought on both sides of the war. The statue, after this, would see a couple decades of peace before the Civil Rights Movement in the 1960s made it a target of controversy. It was threatened or vandalized many times, including the day of Martin Luther King Jr.'s death, the announcing of the verdict for the 1992 Rodney King trial, and during the 1997 Martin Luther King Day celebrations. In recent years, it has been continually vandalized and threatened. In 2015, it was targeted, and in 2017, after the Charlottesville Unite the Right rally, there started to be continual calls and petitions and demonstrations for the statue's removal, something which could not be done because of an earlier state law, which protected historic monuments. During the year after this, the University of North Carolina spent almost $400,000 on security for this statue, believing that the protest could be a serious threat to public safety. Last week, on the 20th of this month, a group of protesters held an event at the statue. The event's purpose was to support an earlier protester who was facing vandalism charges for splashing the statue with red paint mixed with her own blood, as well as to denounce white supremacy. Later that night, a mob of protesters threw ropes around the statue and pulled it down, spitting on it, stomping it, and throwing dirt and mud on it. The statue was carried away the next morning, and its location is currently kept secret for security reasons. Tom Ritchie, in the video he did on this topic, said that sometimes it's good to be reminded that at the bottom of these disagreements is not a faceless man, but the memory of real human beings. And that's part of what I wanted to say here. 
I wanted to say, too, that a monument to some part of history, good or bad, should never be destroyed, as it never ceases to be a reminder of what happened in the past. I view the willful destruction of these monuments as a great act of inhumanity, because it results in people no longer thinking on whatever the monument reminds us of. It results in us forgetting the past. And one more point to this video, I will compare the time of the Civil War to today, because we have never since the Civil War been so divided as a nation. Without the benefit of knowing which political faction future history books will praise, I will compare Antifa and the DSA to the Confederates, as they support ideas and economic systems which, when governments have adopted, have resulted in the deaths of millions of innocent people. Their faction already has one dead as a result of protests, political violence, and street fighting. Heather Hare. I do not want either side to have any more dead in the name of politics. I do not want Heather to be forgotten. I do not want her grave or her memorials destroyed or vandalized. I want people 150 years in the future to hear about her and to know that Americans fought each other, one side defending free speech and the other seeking justice for the oppressed. I want future Americans to know and understand the motives and the arguments of both sides and to learn from them if they can. I want people to see the monument to Heather, or to Trump, or to Pepe the Frog, or whatever thing we decide to make a monument to, and I want them to think about what happened when they see that monument, and regardless of which side puts it up, I want that monument to never be taken down.